I hope somebody back there can hear me. I wish you'd reply. Wish you'd just let me know if you're safe. But maybe your transmitter took battle damage and maybe your receiver is still working. Or if you aliens are in control and you're hearing me, please let me know. I've only been in flight for a day. I'm already going a bit stir-crazy. Makes me wonder if I'm going to handle another six weeks. But at least my reward at the end will be epic wide-open vistas I've never seen outside the holotainments. Maybe it's not the confinement that's getting to me so much as to who I'm confined with. I volunteered for this, thinking I'd have to deal with being alone forever. But it turns out, I have to deal with being stuck in a tin can with my son-in-law and the alien devices in his brain that have turned him into something even worse than usual. I've got him trussed up and gagged. Strictly speaking, the gag may not be necessary. I know I can't keep him gagged the whole trip. But it's creepy hearing him talk. He tried to persuade me that he and his alien friends mean no harm, just days after he kidnapped my daughter and shot her in the leg, and they invaded our world. And there's absolutely no privacy here. Just a single room. Even the toilet isn't separated, because this ship was never meant to have more than one person in it. So by gagging him, I, I guess it gives me the illusion of uh, alone time. Mm, mm. Relativistic dust particles. They warned me about this. Confirming the autopilot's evasive action plan and aligning the ship for maximum protection by the tanker. Quietplease.org presents 253 Matilda. In the early 22nd century, the crewed asteroid 253 Matilda left the solar system on an interstellar mission. Generations later, after 114 years, a new star system stretches out in front of them. Episode 15, To Boldly Go. on out there? None of your concern. Patience. But I'm responsible for it. The brain is not your own. I should have been strong enough to stop it, to keep control. That would be like an ant who's being stepped on, deciding to lift the person up by their foot and push them away. I could have warned somebody about me, requested another examination, something. We're designed not to make you aware of our existence until we're fully able to control your decisions. Are you ever going to release me? We have no need for you at the moment, so we'll relax control for now. Our instructions are to wait until the threat is gone, and then deactivate. When will the threat be gone? Three weeks at currently projected fuel consumption. How am I supposed to live with this guilt? With the memories of what you've made me do? Especially to my wife. Tell me about it. How does it make you feel? Like a tool? Used? Have you considered that being used is a compliment? It means somebody found you useful. I'd rather have gone on being called useless. A boring job is a lot better than being used by you. I didn't know how good I had it. The worst thing that could possibly happen to a person is to not be used for anything by anybody. Someday, you'll thank me for using you, even though you didn't want to be used by anybody. I'll never be glad to have been forced to do evil. We aren't evil, nor have we done evil with you. From where I'm standing, you sure look evil. Without your assistance, the invasion would have happened just the same. Only, it would have taken a little longer and... Somebody might have been hurt. You don't know what happened. Maybe they beat you despite me. An absurd delusion. Wake up, Marcus. It's gotta be for you. My hands are tied. Finally. They're answering my messages. Hi, Dad. 
The invaders are in control, but I think we're all alive. They dumped us in the Arboretum, and they're taking a few at a time over to their asteroid. They'll be demolishing the communications dish shortly, so we don't have much time. But I wanted to let you know we survived. And we'll still get out of this and regain control somehow, Dad. They haven't beaten us yet. They have assuredly been defeated, but we are gracious victors. We will deliver them back to Earth and take the opportunity to warn Earth of the consequences of repeating your bad behavior. You will be allowed to continue your mission as long as you continue decelerating. You will be allowed one reply message not to exceed 30 seconds length in transmission. You must be afraid of our people getting control back, telling Earth something about you. Wow. What should we say? You don't need to say anything. Computer, begin 30 second recording for transmission. Recording, you may begin. It's good to hear your voices and know you're at least alive even though you're not free. In case you haven't figured it out, Monty stowed away with me and remotely detonated your reactor. Marissa, I'm so sorry, I should have been Shut able- Shut up, Amadi. I'm on the clock here. Fifteen seconds now to try to say the things I could never say when we were together. And I guess all I really want to say is, I'm sorry. I wish we could have had a better relationship. And I'm so proud of you both. And I know your mother would have been proud if she could see you today. Time has elapsed. Transmit. Computer, begin report for day 10. Reporting, you may begin. Things have settled into a routine. I get up each morning, well, I call it morning whenever I get up, and review the night sensor logs and any trajectory adjustments that were made to keep us out of the path of dangerous particles. We're still at 63% of light speed, so pretty much everything is dangerous except for the interstellar medium. You hydrogen atoms won't hurt me. We're approaching from below the stellar plane to reduce the dust risk. And luckily, Tau City's Oort cloud is thinner than normal, despite its inner system being so much denser than normal. Or is the latter the reason for the former? Anyway, the ship is holding up well so far. Calling it the ship doesn't seem right. It needs a name. There's only one of them. You only need names when there are two or more. But it seems wrong. I don't think Prospero named the boat he and Miranda were cast to sea in. Is that how you see us? Isn't it how we are? I fled my home, not with my daughters, but with my son-in-law. And we're going to spend the rest of our lives marooned on one of two probably desolate islands in the Galactic Sea. One of them's even named Miranda. Well then, I propose we name the ship Ariel. You can call it that if you like. Ariel, begin journal for day 20. Recording, you may begin. I've had a lot of time to think lately, almost all my time. I've been doing some self-reflection. In the process, I've realized I've been a bit unfair to Amadi. Oh? I've made some terrible decisions in my life. I've made enemies of family and friends. And I didn't have nanobots controlling my prefrontal cortex. It's not really fair of me to hold him responsible for what he did while under their control. Especially when I haven't been able to control myself. Well, that's part of why I had such a visceral reaction to Amani, Because he reminded me that I have no excuse for my own failures. To come to grips with my own past, I think I need to forgive him. I wish I could forgive myself. And really, I've been resenting him for years. Now, well over a decade, if I'm honest. Maybe it's because he was able to turn Marissa's hate for him into love. Well, I couldn't. Somehow he did in a year what I never could. So he's been a reminder that something deep inside me is broken. Part of me that should be able to reach out and apologize and mend broken fences. Apology accepted. <laughs> I can't take much more of this gravity. I almost wish you hadn't untied me. I feel heavy, but not that bad. I guess the injections have been worth something. What is it at the moment? 5 Gs? 2.8 G. As we shed some more fuel mass, it's going to get a lot worse. 
I don't think I'll be able to handle that. Pretty soon, you'll have to wear the G-suit and spend all your time horizontal, strapped into the takeoff couch to prevent your blood pooling in your feet. Great. What are you going to do, though? I'm going to wish we had more than one couch. I've already been doing that. I'll have to lie on the floor most of the time when it gets extreme. Ariel, begin my personal journal for day 30. Should I plug my ears? Recording. You may begin. I think they're gone. They said they'd be gone. But there's no way to be sure without Dr. Stone putting me under a scanner and I'm never going to see him again. The only thing I can do is hope and assume that my thoughts are my own and not being determined by an outside agency. I suppose that's all anybody has ever been able to do. It's just most of them have never been proved wrong about it before like I have. It's such a bizarre, jarring experience to realize that a lot of the things you've been thinking haven't been your own choice, but not knowing exactly how much. Maybe my experience is like some mental illnesses, where you may recognize you weren't in control of your mind for a while, and you may never know if or when you'll lose control again, because nothing is guaranteed to last. Everything could be lost in an instant. The isolation has been hard. Marcus chose this, I didn't. I've never wanted to explore strange new worlds, though I look forward to it now as an alternative to being trapped in here. It's hard to come to terms with being cut off from your loved ones forever, and even from people who you didn't really like that much at the time but kind of miss now, like Detective C. Tang and the mayor. I miss normality. The routine of being surrounded by the same 200 people I'd always been around. I mean, there were births and deaths, but those are gradual. You're rambling, Amadi. Hey, it's my journal. Let me ramble. Ariel, begin mission report for day 40. Reporting. You may begin. As you can hear, we're in a festive mood right now. That's because we've officially crossed the Helio Sheath, meaning we're now inside the Tau Ceti system by all definitions. It's been a long time in the void, and this marks the start of the home stretch. We're going to cover a distance that took 20th century Earth Voyager probes 40 years, all within the next five days. But we've slowed down so much already, and we're safe from the expected size of dust particles. Normally these days we'd be lying down, trying to endure the force of our deceleration, but I've dialed back the engines for a little while so we can celebrate this moment. I've been having to dial it back a few times a day so we can stand up and feed ourselves and relieve ourselves. Lucky I can do that by voice command or we'd be stuck. Ariel, begin mission report for day 45. Recording, you may begin. This is it, the big day, what it's all been for. I'd be leaping for joy about it, but uh, that's impossible in this gravity. You should feel it without your injections. I can't lift a finger. I can barely stay conscious. Hey, you, you got the only G-suit. It was meant for me. Primary burn will end in 10 seconds. In a moment, the struggle will be over. We'll go from heavier than you can imagine to weightless in the blink of an eye. Engine shutdown successful. Phew. I feel like an elephant just got off my chest. We're turning over. Prepare for orbital insertion burn in 10 seconds. Now the gravity will come back for about 5 seconds, but not so extreme as before. With any luck. Orbital insertion confirmed. Phew. And that's what we've been waiting to hear for 45 days. We made it. Undocking from tanker is complete. Have you picked a landing spot? It'll have to be equatorial to be warm enough. And we were advised to pick an island if possible to limit our contamination of the native ecosystem. How about that one? It's a big island and you can see something's growing there. We also need a safe landing spot, something flat. There's a lot of hills there. The vegetation may be too thick. 
This little mesa looks pretty bare. But does that mean it's too dry and we wouldn't find water? There's a river about uh, three kilometers from it, if we can get down to it. Shouldn't be an issue. On the off chance we can't find a hiking path, the gravity and air density of Eddington will let us glide down on simple wings. I think this will be a good spot. Watch out, Eddington. Here we come. Are you sure it's supposed to do this? How many times do you think I've landed on another world? Didn't they train you? Well, they said there'd be turbulence. But the hole was glowing hot, and those sparks... Superheated plasma. I mean, we might be about to die, but well, there's nothing I can do about it. The ship is landing itself. Let's hope it knows what it's doing. Welcome to Eddington. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get out there and enjoy some wide open spaces. Go ahead, open the hatch. You go first, of course. That's one small step for me. One giant leap for the people who got us here. Or know we made it, or what we found. You've been listening to 253 Matilda, Episode 15, To Boldly Go. Created, written, produced, and directed by Paul Neerham. Marcus Flint is Glenn Haskell. Detective Arash Ahmadi is Paul Neerham. The computer is Microsoft Azure Neural Voice Jenny. The alien is Megan Schmidt. Chief Mech Larissa Flint is Lindsay Townsend. Dr. Stone is John Gauntz. Dr. Peters is Ahmad A.J. Judah. Communications Chief Marissa Flint is Virginia Hargrove. The announcer is Aaron Summonsby. Sound effects and music courtesy freesound.org, asoundeffect.com, freepd.com, and audionautics.com. This program is licensed for free reuse and redistribution. Hear more episodes at quietplease.org slash 253.